okay, so now I, we need to measure everything so we can get an idea of where the upper control arm needs to end up. Uh, so these are the measurements, or these are measurements required for uh, vsusp.com, vsusp.com, uh, to kind of calculate roll center. So for frame center to lower mount X, so we're going off of that square that I have clamped to the frame, so that's right in the center of the frame. And then the X distance is a left to right distance, so we're going frame center to lower mount, lower control arm mount X. So I put the other square right there, and then I can just measure from there to there, and that gives me the X distance right there. Then you can get, um, so the upper mount, we don't know that one yet, that's what we're trying to find out. Uh, lower control arm length, that can be found in a similar way here with just another square over at this side. And then hub to upper ball joint X, so it's hub face to the upper ball joint location. So in, that ca in this case, since I ha have the hub bolted into the jig, Basically, I can just measure to the center of the ball joint from the inside of the jig face, which is the same as the hub face. And then hub to upper ball joint Y. So basically, I'll just take one of these squares and move it over here and measure off the floor up to that ball joint. And then just do the subtraction based on where the hub is at off the floor. Same with the lower ball joint and then hub to outer tie rod, same exact thing. Um, we know that the tie rod ball joint is going to be somewhere above the steering arm there. So that's where I'll measure to from here and down. And that'll give me the ball joint location. Then I can put all that into VSUSP and we can figure out uh, the best angle and length for this upper control arm to give uh, a roll center right about there. Also, one other thing is when when we're measuring like specifically the upper ball joint location from the hub face. Remember, in this jig, I had built-in camber with a shim. Uh, so it's actually something like if you did build the jig with camber in the jig, uh, then you wouldn't be getting like a static, like uh, default value with no camber in it. So, so here I've taken my shim out. So right now it has zero camber. It's like totally straight up and down. So I measure from the hub face to the ball joint and, uh, actually So on my jig, I did not build the camber into the jig itself. I built it into the, uh, like I, I had a shim here, shimming it away from the jig face so that it had a one degree of camber. So I have to take that shim out in order to get a proper measurement from hub face to ball joint. Okay, so here's all the measurements I took in the page and like I said this is just uh, this page is just all the fields off of VSUSP uh, I wrote out so I could print it out and write on the paper instead of having the computer next to me while I was measuring the car but so out of all this all we really want to know is uh, frame center to upper mount Y so how high is the upper control arm mount going to be on the frame. That's really all we need to know because we already know where the ball joint is and we're just gonna build the upper control arm between the ball joint and the upper mount on the frame. And so all I'm doing is putting all the numbers that we just measured, putting them in here and trying to figure out a mounting point for the upper control arm that will give us something close to reasonable for a streetcar. So, 
um, basically, so this is all the measurements, and this frame bottom to upper mount Y is the one we're going to play with to try to get stuff around the right point. Uh, and that's what I've done, so it's about nine and a half inches from the bottom of the frame, or 14 and a half inches from the ground for this specific car. And uh, that puts our roll center here at one point, or three point two inches about. And um, our static camber is at 1.158 degrees, so about 1.2 degrees. And then we can watch like if we push the suspension like into bump by like, let's see. Oh, where am I looking? Okay, bump. If we put it at two inches of bump, so that's like, that's just like the car coming down two inches, which is about the limits of this particular suspension. Our camber is now at about three degrees. And like I said, I'm not an expert, but that seems acceptable to me. And then if we put it in a corner and roll it over, so here's our roll angle by, let's say two to three degrees. So we're at zero camber at like two degrees. So if like the body's rolling two degrees, the outside tire is gonna be straight up and down vertical. So, I mean, I think that on a street car, that's acceptable. I think if you are racing, uh, well, first off, you're gonna have stiffer springs, so you may have less body roll, but you may want, depending on the body roll you're gonna have, you might want a more aggressive uh, camber at that roll. And now if we do roll and bump up to two, two inches. Let's reset this first. Bump to two inches. And roll to two degrees. Now we still have negative two degree camber. So we still, still have negative camber there. I think that's as acceptable for a streetcar. Like I said, I'm not an expert, so but I think that this will get us in the range of a uh, predictably safely handling streetcar. And um, I don't know that more, being more uh, precise about it is gonna give a better, better handling streetcar. I mean, if you're building a race car, uh, you, may, you may wanna be better about this, but also this probably isn't the video for you if you're building strictly a race car so yeah that mount's going to be nine and a half inches from the bottom of the frame and if we reset this here and go to the control arm tab we can see that it says that upper control arm is going to be at six point about 6.7 degrees inclination and it's 13 inches long and so what i'm going to do is like rejig the like set up the jig back with the one degree of camber put that uh, upper control arm mount uh, tacked in the right place and then just build the control arm between the two points. So this is the upper control arm parts. This is the kit from Kinetic Vehicles in Oregon. Uh, doesn't come with the chassis tabs. He sells those separately and it doesn't come with the ball joint. This is uh, the upper ball joint that I'm using that everybody pretty much uses on the uh, Miatas, Miata spindles. This is a tie rod end for an F-250. I can't remember what year, but if you go on kind of website, they'll tell you. Um, and then the, I can't remember what this tube is called, but it comes in different lengths. So you buy the control arm kit and it comes with like PVC to simulate that tube. And then you, uh, just tell them what size tube you want and then they'll send that one. Um, and this fits in there, you weld around there after you cut this to length. And then this, this part comes with the kit to the, the jam nut and the sleeve uh, that thread onto the Ford, the Ford tie rod end. And then the the AN bolt that it comes with, seems like on mine it uh, didn't quite fit through the clevis, so I'll have to make the clevis hole slightly larger to fit the AN bolt, but not a big deal. 
So yeah, uh, we just tack these to the frame, then put the ball joint in, then figure out how long this is gonna be, cut to length, install that, and then we can install the, the rear tube. So we determined from VSUSP webpage that uh, the upper controller mounts should be about 14 and a half inches off the ground. So all I did was I clamped two squares to my jig and then go to 14 and a half there and just eyeball over to 14 and a half there, which is that line that I drew and just clamp the, clamp the uh, suspension mounts there just at that eyeball height and I'll just tack those in and then we will build the lower control arms between them. Alright, so all four upper control arm mounts are tacked on at 14 and a half inches off the ground. Um, one thing I found that did help was put the first mount in, eyeball it exactly, and then use like an adjustable square and then measure down. So you can measure off the top rail of the frame down to the bracket and then make the other four match it. And then, so I did that and then eyeballed it and they were all dead on. So that was, that was a good help. Then uh, getting these front tubes in, we just want to see how long they're going to be. So we kind of just put them in here. We've got um, the adjustment in the center of the range on the upper ball joint, the adjustment in the center of the range at that tie rod or at the rod end and then we just made a line on the back here exactly flush with the face of that and then when we take it off the car we'll cut this end off put it inside and weld around and then we'll have that front half of the arm complete then it can go back in the car and we'll do the rear half All right, so the front arm is in, um, just needs to be tacked there, but it's not gonna move. Um, then the rear arm with the little bracket, uh, all we gotta do is thread it on there, set it right up there. We can tack here and we can tack here and it should hold a wheel after that. All right, I got magnets holding it in place now. Basically ready to tack. And then I can take the jig out and put wheels on it. All right, so they're tacked in. Uh, they ended up about eight degrees slanted inward. Slightly different than what Vsusp said, but Maybe I just couldn't measure perfectly, uh, but I think it'll work. And it should just about hold wheels. So I'm gonna take the jig out and put some wheels on it.
Well, that's a pretty big milestone, especially since that's what's been stopping me on this car for the last six or whatever years it is. Pretty cool to see it sitting on four wheels, or at least sitting with four wheels. Uh, steering rack is gonna be <coughs> a shortened Miata rack. Uh, have motorcycle shocks for the rear, probably buy some more for the front. But it looks legit, even if it doesn't, even if it doesn't handle perfectly, at least it looked good. Well, I'm super happy to have that to a point where it's where it's pretty much done. Like, I think the control, the upper control arms, I may have them TIG welded. Um, I did. I turned up the heat on the MIG welder, and it put down much better tax. So, if I feel confident someday, maybe I'll just go MIG them. But it's to a point where I can work on other things now and not worry about it because I know that it is what it is, and it's done. And it'll probably work fine. Uh, so next I can either throw the engine in and work on transmission tunnel and some other things, or I can mess with the steering rack. Um, yeah. So looking forward to working on something different now. <laughs> 